Hey everyone, hope you're all doing very well. Welcome back to another one here on the channel. In today's video, we're diving back into the core of radio control power systems, and we're gonna be taking a look at one of the most well-known values in RC, and that is going to be the KV value for our brushless motors. We're gonna find out what does this value tell us, and also putting a little bit more emphasis on what it does not tell us. And I hope through the end of this video that it clears up a couple of questions that have come up in the comment section on videos. With that being said, and just before we get started, I do want to say there still is time to put your questions in the comment section of the post that I left a couple days ago. I'm going to be speaking potentially with a battery manufacturer slash seller, and if you have any questions that you want me to go and ask this seller, let me know on the comment section of the post that I made. If you leave it in this video, I won't have time to see your comment or question, and I won't be able to ask ask it. That doesn't mean I'm going to get to all the questions because already there's a bunch of questions that you guys have left and I thank you for that. I'm hoping for more and I hope that we can get as many of those questions answered as much as possible. Let's now jump into it and talk about our KV value. As soon as I say the word KV value, it is quite clear to me that many hobbyists understand this term and know that it applies for our hobby. And then there's maybe a bit fewer that understand what the KV value means. But out of all the terminologies that we use in RC, this is probably the most understood value. And what's understood about it is its core definition. The KV value provides us with the unloaded RPM for every volt of input that we apply to it. Now what's interesting about this is the KV value is specific for the output of the motor. But this is not exactly how we get KV. So I'm going to diverge a little bit here from our topic. When we take the measurement of KV, we're not taking a specific voltage, applying it to the motor, measuring the RPM, and dividing those two to get RPM per volt. We're actually taking back EMF and measuring it in a different way. And then there's another value that we're able to extract from KV as well. If we take that KV value and we go one divided by that value, we're going to get what is known as the KT value. Now KT is the torque constant of our brushless motor, where KV is the velocity constant of a brushless motor. When we talk about KT, this is represented as the amount of torque that we can get out of the motor, but not the total torque that we can get out of the motor. Only the torque per amp that we push in terms of current through the motor is going to be the result there. Now I have here a bunch of motors in front of me. I'm going to pull a couple of them, and that's going to be this inrunner and an outrunner. Now between both of these brushless motors, we have an 800 kV on our outrunner and we have a 2200 kV on our TP brushless motor. Now most of you probably have heard of the TP brushless motor as it's quite commonly used in radio control cars and more specifically speed run cars. This motor absolutely rips and it's quite fast. Now a 2200 kV on it versus an 800, you might think that this motor is gonna actually put out more torque, but that's not necessarily true until you start looking at the amount of current that we actually push through each one of these. And I'll get into exactly that, but keep that in mind that it's not correct to be able to say that one produces more torque than the other without looking at all the characteristics and all of the variables, not just the KV value. So if you know that you're throwing 100 amps into the motor and you have a KT value, then you can determine what the actual total amount of torque is going to be for that specific motor. So that is really good to know. What this essentially tells us is when we look at KV and we look at KT, we get the velocity of the motor and we get the torque of the motor, but we only get this as a function of the electrical input that we're placing into this motor. For KV, it's per volt and for KT it's per amp. So we don't know the actual total velocity or total torque until we have the voltage applied and the current applied. So that is very interesting and unique to know because that helps us to understand what the KV value does not tell us. What we know that it doesn't tell us is the total torque because we don't have the current that we can throw through it so we don't know how much torque we can actually apply. If we see a motor that has a 3500 KV value 
and an 1100 kV value, it is not correct to say that the 1100 kV motor is going to have more torque. In fact, if you're actually taking these values from the same class of motor, that means they're identical other than just the kV value, you're gonna find if you do the math that you work out the same exact torque output that this motor can achieve. That higher kV motor applies essentially the same amount of torque output as that lower kV motor. Now I copped on to new motors, their website, looked at a specific size of their brushless motor, taken a big list of values, and I've computed that here for you. We get the maximum current, we have the kV, they even give us a kT value. I just happen to take the value that is in terms of inch ounces here, and then I end up doing a computation here, a quick calculation to show you that all these kV values actually produce the same amount of torque. And that's because our higher kV motor delivers torque based off of a higher potential current. Now a few other points to note here as well. The kV value obviously does not tell us the amount of power output that we can get from a brushless motor. It doesn't tell us the efficiency that we can get from a brushless motor. In fact, it's quite limiting as to what it exactly tells us. But it has a very specific purpose and that's what we need in order to understand the total amount of RPM that we get out of that brushless motor so that we don't pull too much current and blow that motor up. This is by far one of the biggest challenges in RC selecting your power system is making sure that you have your RPM correct for the load that you intend to apply. And you do this by understanding what kind of voltage that you're applying to your brushless motor and then select a proper KV value that's going to work with that specific voltage. That's how we use the KV value of the brushless motor and we don't yet worry about the KT value of the motor because we can adjust this through gearing if it's for a radio control car or we can adjust this based on the propeller that that we size for our specific application. Now, of course, we talked about the KV value being related to the unloaded RPM, so obviously it doesn't tell us the loaded RPM that we get from our radio control vehicle. That's why we can jump onto the RC calc sheet that is found on the Patreon website here and use some of the parameters in order to help us determine what that loaded value is. This is a way that we can get around this so that we can still predict the top speed of radio controlled cars for example. Well guys that pretty well does it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it talking about KV values and building up our power systems using these types of values in order to make certain we're selecting the right components. As always like the video if you do. Don't forget to hit that sub button so that I can see you guys in the next video. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next one.